All right, ladies and gentlemen. So I have a, a fairly sizable problem for you tonight, uh, but a very common one. So behind me, I have three graphs here. I want you to look at the one in the middle first. Uh, this here, you should recognize as an economy graph. Uh, hopefully, you know what type of economy we have here. We have an economy operating at full employment output, or you could say at the natural rate of unemployment. Um, and this is our long run equilibrium here. And on either side here, over here I have the graph that shows the relationship between inflation and unemployment, also known as the Phillips curve. And then way over here on the left, this here is the money market graph uh, with a money supply and a money demand here. Again, you should know who controls the money supply. That would be the Federal Reserve Bank. Or on the AP test, uh, since it is an international exam, uh, just a central banking authority. So this is a big question, but it's a question that in some way, shape, or form is going to show up on the AP test. So these three graphs will work together uh, to illustrate some ideas here. And I'm going to tell you this scenario, and then I'm going to ask you to do some things. See if you can do them on your own before I go through and demonstrate how this is done. So, with our long run, uh, our economy in long run equilibrium, we're going to have all of a sudden the Fed is going to begin buying bonds. I want you to see if you can figure out what's going to happen to your money market, what will happen here, and what will happen here as a result. Uh, I'll step out of the way. I'll give you a second to uh, ponder, pause the video, and see what you can come up with before I give it a go here. All right, that's long enough. Uh, so let's see here. If you remember the song, Buy Bonds Tonight, Money Supply Moves Right. All right, so I'll move my money supply to the right. I do that, I get MS2. Well, what happened here? But the interest rate, the nominal interest rate fell. So let's see, sing the song some more. Buy bonds tonight, money supply moves right, interest rates go down, and I'll just have to buy that brand new wedding gown. Oh, we're going to be doing more buying. I notice I have three, three things, four things that change my aggregate demand curve. One of them is consumption uh, increasing here. You could also say investments, any sort of... Uh, interest-based uh, uh, spending, whether it be for investments like capital goods or consumer goods like cars and trucks, uh, would work here. So if this is getting bigger, my AD is going to go to the right, and I get, erase that, AD2. So far, so good. Now, I'm going to label this guy B, my new equilibrium. You'll notice, what I'm going to do is I've got an A here and an A here. Now I'm going to figure out where this B goes. I'm not going to label all this here, but I'm going to assume that you can follow me here. From A to B, my real GDP increased. When real GDP goes up, that means that my unemployment is going to go down. On this graph, let me stand here, unemployment is on the bottom. A falling unemployment is to the left. So my, my, uh, my dot, I'm going this way, all right? And then my price level has increased here. Uh, so I'm going to go up with my inflation to this point like so, and I'm going to get my B, all right? You'll notice something here. Your Phillips curve graph and your economy graph are mirror images of each other. And I know that you guys remember me saying this because I saw two people today in class trying to fold their paper in half to see if the A's and the B's uh, match up. And if they don't, you know you did something wrong. So these are mirror images of one another. So far, so good. All right. Uh, now, I bet a lot of you can actually do this pretty easily. Um, and without too much uh, work, you're going to pick it up really quick. Now, the question is, can we remain at point B. The answer is no. This is unsustainable. This is this is past our longer and aggregate supply curve. This is outside 
of our production possibilities curve. We can't do this in the long run. So we're going to have to adjust. The question is, how? Well, the thing that you have to think about uh, when we're talking about this adjustment is you have to, I think the easiest way to think of it is about sticky wages. Remember, in the short run, wages are sticky. They won't adjust. But here, all of a sudden, we had a rising price level. We had inflation occurring. Uh, so over time, what is going to happen? You will see that wages adjust upward to match this new higher price level. And since wages end up having to go up, think about what, had, what employers will have to do. They will be unwilling to pay uh, a worker an extra dollar or two an hour, so they're going to have to can some people. If you're getting rid of workers, that's going to affect your ability to produce. So you're going to see a short and aggregate supply curve slide back, SRAS 2, and now we've got C, A, B, C. The question is, where is C over here? C is going to work like this. Uh, and it's not going to work, look exactly the same, but we're going to see since our short and aggregate supply curve went to the left, our short and Phillips curve, again, is a mirror image. So we're going to see our short and aggregate supply curve uh, go to the left. Short and Phillips curve is going to go to the right. Like so, actually, I could have done that a little bit better, but I'm going to leave it like so for right now. Uh, C technically probably shouldn't be there, but you'll be okay if you see the short and aggregate spiker go to the left. You want the short and Phillips curve to go to the right. I'm going to do another video in just a second to clean this one up a little bit. So if you know how to do that problem, you're going to be in very good shape for the AP test. Again, questions, bring them to me tomorrow night, review session. Uh, best of luck tonight, guys. Thank you very much.